as you guys all know, uh, the area of culture development is like my lifeblood when I do consulting on a day-to-day -day basis. But today, one thing I really want to talk about that could really mess culture up in any organization is the topic of bullying. And for me, I just feel that it has been so prominent in the workforce in the past several years, just as much as it has been in the schools. And bullying in general has always just made me feel a little bit queasy to my stomach because no one is better than the next person in this world in my eyes. What is workplace bullying? Right? A lot of people ask that. What is it? And what it is is it's repeated health harming mistreatment of one or more persons and they're called the targets by one or more perpetrators that takes one or more of the following forms. So if you just think about this for a second, number one, verbal abuse. And that could include anything from offensive conduct, behaviors, um, including nonverbal, which are threatening, humiliating, or intimidating, like uh, kind of like the tones in someone's email. Uh, work interference, like you're trying to sabotage them, uh, anything that prevents work from actually getting done on a day-to-day -day basis. Now that we have seen this, I've seen we've seen it so prominently in law firms and the legal workplace especially because it's a breeding ground for bullies. They feel like a law firm's should be treated just like the courtroom, unfortunately. And uh, they have that feel of, I gotta uh, kind of attack, I've gotta get at somebody. So we've seen this really predominantly in law firms. Unfortunately, businesses don't always care about work workplace bullying, even though they really should. As a business owner or a manager, you should be concerned about workplace bullying all the time for both monetary and non-monetary reasons. The cost of turnover and trying to retain uh, an employee or absenteeism because a person's out all the time because they don't wanna come to work, the potential of litigation costs should be just enough to have any business owner or manager concerned about workplace bullying, honestly. Additionally, the resulting damage to an the enterprise's reputation, just the reputation of your organization and its related ability to attract strong talent should always be a key, key consideration when you're trying to grow your organization and when you're trying to grow your organization's culture. Because I always say about culture, it's probably the, the, the least expensive way to attract the best talent in the industry, honestly. So I just wanna talk about for a minute, many business owners and managers don't see an employee as an asset. And I know I've done a video on this before, um, but just to kind of reiterate, a lot of them see them as an expense, you know, just another tick on your, on your expense worksheet, worksheet because it's payroll and it's a benefit you had to pay out. But overall, the impact on the company cuts right into your bottom line. So here's some stats for you that I want to share with you. In 2001, it was recorded that the antics of one serial bully in the workplace had the potential to reduce the performance of their victims by half. And then that of other employees that were watching it by 33% because they were engaged in what was going on. Just imagine that reduction of an employee's performance by 50% when you're expecting 100% from that employee. Less than 20% of employers will help a bullied target. Isn't that really sad? Less than 20%. Coworkers will rarely help the targets of bullying because they just don't want to get involved, right? And most bullying targets are seen by coworkers as kind, cooperative, and agreeable people, so they're easily to be, get walked over by a bully. 72% of the adult America public is familiar with instances of workplace bullies. I, bullying, I'm sure that you have seen it. 
I'm sure that everyone watching this video has seen it. 65.6 million people are affected by bullying, including the targets and the witnesses in the world today. That's a huge number. 69% of workplace bullies are men. And then while 60% of bullying targets are women, targets lose their jobs at a significantly higher rate than the perpetrators. You want to know why? Because they just want to leave. They just want to give up. They don't, they don't want to deal with it anymore. It's never the bully that loses their job. And you want to know the numbers? 82% of the targets of the victims lose their jobs versus 18% of the perpetrators or the bullies themselves. Can you even believe those numbers? 61% of all targets of bullying end up losing their job because either their performance just lacks or they just can't take it anymore. Thankfully, most informed Americans support legislation providing protection from workforce aggression. There actually is it currently in 29 states and two U.S. territories have introduced a version of what's called the Healthy Workplace Bill, which is aimed at precisely defining an abusive work environment, providing specific rights for victims, which is awesome, and protecting employers who take action against workforce bullies. So on the other side of the coin are these, these bullies that then go back after the employer for unfair or wrong termination. I want you to step back today for a second and think about bullying in your workplace. Are you the culprit? Is someone you work with a target? Are you a target? It's really, really scary to even know about it. This is a serious problem. Just as serious as what's going on with bullying in the schools and the different suicides going on because of it. But I want you to get serious about this issue because honestly, you shouldn't want to see workplace bullying going on in your workplace. So I encourage you to help uh, make it stop. If you're a business owner or manager, make it stop. Make sure it's not happening in your department. If you are an employee and you see it going on, you have to tell somebody. You have to because in the end, it said 82% of the targets lose their jobs and 18% of the bullies lose their jobs. We have to turn those numbers around. Um, so my, my suggestion to you, my challenge to you is step outside of your box and do the right thing if you know of any of this type of stuff going on. Change the culture in your organization. This will help you if you do this. So until next time, some food for thought for you, and I hope that you have a good day.